Hey guys, it's Cece, and today I'm here to talk about all of the books that I got in September. Um, I have 45 books to talk about. I don't fully know what happened. I don't fully know what happened. The, the frightening thing is that I bought most of these. I think it's because I moved to Washington and all of a sudden I had all of these new secondhand bookstores to go to and I just kind of went too hard <laughs> on book shopping. So I have 45 books to talk about. Um, so these are from a combination of places. Uh, I have a few from Value Village. Most of these are from Half Price Books. I did a really big Half Price Books run just going to like the Half Price Books location near me, but then Half Price Books also had a warehouse sale that I went to and I got an entire tote bag of books there for, uh, it was $25 to like fit as many books as you could in a tote bag. So I did that. I also have a ton of books that were sent to me. Um, so here's how we're gonna do this. I don't know what a ton of these books are about, so those books I'm not going to talk about for as long. I probably grabbed them because they had an interesting cover, and when I scanned over the summary at the Half Price Books Warehouse sale, I thought it sounded kind of interesting. So for a bunch of these, I'm not going to tell you much about the summary. We're just going to try to get through all of these books. Um, this still isn't even everything. I did a separate haul. I did a Come Book Shopping With Me video where I went to Value Village and Half Price Books, and that includes, like, I think 11 titles. So if you want to hear about those books, go watch that video. That's an entirely separate haul. I'm not talking about those books in this video. Let's just get started. Um, and let's start by talking about the books that were sent to me, because I probably know a little bit more about them. So first I have four books from Tor.com. Um, I work with Tor.com every now and then. They send me novellas. It's pretty cool. So I have three books that I know a little bit about and one that I'm very excited about. I'll tell you the one I'm excited about. It's Come Tumbling Down by Sean and McGuire, uh, one of my most anticipated releases of 2020 because this is part of the Wayward Children series. I requested this book and it came on a Saturday and literally I went and picked this up from the mail and then I drove to the Half Price Book Sale and then I drove and met Sean and McGuire. <laughs> so this book, along with all of the other books in the Wayward Children series, I now have signed. Um, it was a lot. Oh my god. The Wayward Children series is a novella series about it, it's a portal fantasy, but it's portal fantasy that deals with kind of the trauma that is involved with portal fantasies. It's one of my favorite things in the world and I'm really excited because this one is set back at the school again. Every other book is either about like a backstory of a character and then it's back at the school. So this is back at Eleanor West's Home for Wayward Children and I can't wait to read it. I also got a few other books. I got Riot Baby by Tochi Anyabuchi. I wanted to pick this up at Book Expo and then I couldn't make it to any of the events where they were dropping this arc, so I'm really glad I got the chance to grab this now. Um, it's coming out in 2020 as well. January. January of 2020. Um, I don't know a ton about this, but I was interested in the author. I know it's a global dystopian narrative and an intimate family story. Um, that is also about love, fury, and the Black American experience. So that all sounded super up my alley. I asked them to send this to me. I was also interested in Made Things by Adrian Tchaikovsky. This is about a street thief who also has little, uh, accomplices that are made of, like, wood and metal. Sounded interesting enough to me. Uh, this is being released November 5th. Of 2019. And I have Sisters of the Vast Black by Lena Rather, which um, is being released on October 29th, 2019. This is a sci-fi story that is also very much about religion and about a ship that has a mind of its own, so I thought that that sounded super interesting and hopefully I'll be reading this one soon as well. I also have We Are Lost and Found. This was sent to me by Sourcebooks and it is by Helene Dunbar. This is a bit of queer YA historical fiction that I've been anticipating. It is like, I love this cover. I think it's beautiful. But I was drawn to the story because it is about uh, two brothers, one of whom has already been kicked out of his house for being gay, which has sent the other one further back into the closet because he doesn't want to deal with the same thing. So it's about queer siblings, which 
I don't think we have a ton of in YA fiction, but this is also set in New York and is definitely following sort of the fear of the AIDS epidemic at the time. This is probably going to be a difficult read, but one that I'm really excited about, so I was glad when Sourcebooks asked if they could send this to me. Basically, when I do my anticipated queer releases videos, sometimes publishers reach out and ask if they can send books that I talked about in that video that I don't have copies of yet. So that is kind of what happened with Orpheus Girl by Bryn Rebel Henry. I talked about this in my anticipated queer releases of the second half of the year. This is a super short book, but it is about two girls who are in an established relationship. Um, they are from rural Texas and they are sent to a conversion camp and they have to rely on each other to try to get away from this place. So it's going to be kind of a difficult read, but it's also by a poet, so I think it's going to also be super lyrical and interesting. And since Soho Teen asked if they could send this along to me, they also tacked on a different book that I hadn't heard of before, but one that I'm interested in. It's called Hope is Our Only Wing. This is by Rutendo Tavengerway. This is about two girls. Um, it is about one girl who moves with her mother from England to Zimbabwe after the mysterious death of her father and she meets another girl in Zimbabwe and the two girls start to rely on each other. So Soho Teen sent this one along to me as well. It's also a pretty short YA book but I'm really glad that they decided to send this to me because I think it sounds interesting. I also have The Athena Protocol by Shamim Sarif. I didn't know that much about this. Um, it turns out it is kind of a YA thriller about a group that is interested in performing vigilante justice and I was kind of interested in that, but then I found out this is queer, so now I'm definitely interested. That's all I know for now, but uh, maybe check it out, because as soon as I found out it was queer, I was a lot more interested, to be honest with you. That's just kind of who I am as a person. I also have two arcs from Flatiron, one of which I've already read, so we have Salt Slow by Julia Armfield. I'm gonna talk about this more in my October wrap-up, but it is a short story collection about women's experiences pushed to surreal and horrific extremes. It's a short story collection. Um, that's absolutely incredible. Like, I gave this five stars. It is basically my favorite short story collection I've ever read. It's definitely, like, chilling and horrifying, but it's got a lot of speculative elements, psychological horror, and I absolutely loved it. So this is already out. Yes, it is out now. It's the author's debut book. I highly encourage you to pick up a copy. I I can't wait to talk about this more in my October wrap-up. The other book Flatiron Books sent me is one that I recently talked about in my Spookathon TBR. That is last one's Left Alive by Sarah Davis Goff. This is another book that's already been released. It is an apocalyptic story about a girl who has been like, she's only met two other people in her entire 15 years, um, and that's her mom and her mom's partner, Mabe, and it's an apocalyptic book that was brought on by kind of like a disease, a zombie-like disease called the Scrake. So I'm reading this one soon. I'm super interested. I also have Last True Poets of the Sea. This is by Juliet Drake. This was sent to me by a patron. I like... I am so glad that a patron sent this along to me. I didn't know it existed, and then as soon as I started yelling about it, they were like, hey, I can send you the book. And I, I, ah. This is a YA book that is loosely inspired by Twelfth Night, which is like my second favorite Shakespearean play, but this has a female-female romance. So I'm gonna die. I can't wait to read it. I also have Rules for Vanishing. This is by Kate Alice Marshall. This was sent to me from Penguin Teen because I did a little promotional thing for it on Instagram. It was super fun. This is about a girl who goes searching for her sister. Apparently the only way to find her sister is to follow along this path in the woods that only appears once a year. Uh, this is supposed to be very, very spooky, but it is also queer. There's a female-female relationship, I believe, and <laughs> yes, I am just like completely 100% down for all of the spooky, eerie, queer YA books. Queer any books. Just give me perfect autumnal reads that are also about queer characters. I'm so here for it. Um, this was already released. It came out back in September, and Last True Poets of the Sea is being released in October. Ah, it's already out. It was released on October 1st, so thank you very much to Kim for sending this to me. I'm so excited. 
Another book I'll be talking about in my October wrap-up is Cantoras by Carolina de Robertis, which I talked about in my anticipated adult releases for the second half of 2019. This was sent to me uh, by the publisher and I loved it. It's a five-star read. <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful. Can't wait to talk about this more. This begins in Uruguay in the 1970s and it is about a group of five queer women at a time when being queer could get you thrown in prison. It's a time of political unrest and it is about 35 years in these women's lives. Um, it's like a beautiful book. It's like a perfect book, in my opinion. I sobbed through reading this. It's it's absolutely brilliant. I'm so glad the publisher sent this to me so that I can talk about it like forever. And the last book that I was sent was actually sent to me by a subscription box that I definitely think people should check out. It's called Osasume Books and it is a subscription box that is dedicated to getting Japanese fiction uh, that is translated into English into the hands of readers. So they asked if I would be willing to like talk about the book on my Instagram page and I was like yes 100% absolutely. So they sent me a Japanese translated novel and that one wound up being Twinkle Twinkle. This is by Kari Ikuni and it was translated by Emi Shimakawa. This was sent to me because it's queer! Shocking! It's good that people know me. This is about a couple who has just recently gotten married. Um, neither of them wants to be married, particularly to each other, but it seemed like they were the perfect options to be together for a sham marriage to kind of get their parents off their backs. So Mitsuki is gay and he has a boyfriend and the other character, Shoko, is a clinical case of emotional instability who's in no shape for a relationship. So that is, this is about them. This also came with a note from the creators of the box as well as a little bookmark. I had never heard about this book but I think it sounds really interesting and I am always for supporting translated novels. I think that we don't talk about them nearly enough. We don't read enough books that are from like international authors so I'm really eager to read this one. Plus this is a gorgeous book. So this is what it looks like underneath but then also Look how cool this is. I'm so into the design of this book. Next I have three books I bought for myself two of them from Amazon and one from a local independent bookstore. So the ones from Amazon we have Life is Wonderful, People are Terrific by Melissa Benyalis. If you want to hear more about this book, I talked about it in my September wrap-up. It is a spectacularly strange book about queer Chicana culture in the 90s and also different types of 90s feminism. Super interesting. Go watch that video if you want to hear more about it. I also grabbed A Two-Spirit Journey. This is by Mani Chikabi with Mary Louise Plummer. This is a nonfiction book. In November, I am focusing on reading books by indigenous authors as well as nonfiction because it is Native American Heritage Month as well as nonfiction November. So this felt like the perfect convergence of those two things. I'm really, really eager to read this one in November. It's been on my TBR for a long time and I'm glad that I finally got myself a copy. And the other one that I grabbed is Juliet Takes a Breath by Gabby Rivera, which I got at third place books when I went to the event. Uh, that Gabby was having there and so so amazing to meet Gabby in person. There we go. It's signed. Um, this is one of my favorite books in the world. Uh, here, let me also show you this. I think it's pretty cool. I read this book a couple of years ago. This is just sort of the re-release that Penguin is doing. This is about a Puerto Rican lesbian from the Bronx who gets an internship with a hippie dippy white feminist in Portland and has to learn about labels and identity, how she can identify as a lesbian, how she can identify as a feminist when feminism seems so white. I absolutely adore this book. So I got this signed uh, and Gabby was absolutely incredible. It like, I almost cried hearing her read passages from this book aloud because it means so much to me. Next I have three books from Value Village. Three. First we have the collected poems of Emily Dickinson because I'm this kind of lesbian apparently now. Um, I really love Emily Dickinson and I have wanted to read more of her work. I've read a ton of her work already but I grabbed this at Value Village because like I'm not gonna pass up the opportunity to read more Emily Dickinson. I also got a book called Dear Life Stories by Alice Monroe. It's been one of my goals to get into short story collections by one author. That has been my goal for like 2019 but it didn't really happen but I've 
really been trying to push myself to do that more for a couple of years now. So I know Alice Munro, I recognized the author, and that was kind of all it took for me to grab this. I don't know what the short story collection is about, but in 2020, one of my reading goals is going to be to read a short story collection every single month. So I've been stocking up. I'm excited to read this one. I also got, as you wish, uh, Inconceivable Tales from the Making of the Princess Bride by Carrie Elwes. Um, this is just like, I've wanted to read this for a while. I love memoirs and I love The Princess Bride. Yeah, that's kind of it. I absolutely love this picture of them on the back. It's gonna make me want to rewatch The Princess Bride like a billion times. Oh my god. I just opened up the dust jacket and look! It's so cool! <laughs> okay, okay. Next, let's talk about all the books that I got at the Half Price Books Warehouse sale, because they are the ones I know the least about. So I have 14 books that I fit in my tote bag that all together were $25. Most of these, uh, I think all but two are adult fiction, so it would have been worth it literally to buy two hardcover adult fiction books. It would have Adult fiction is so expensive, but yeah, I have some books. I've got Bright Lines, a novel by Tanwi Nadini Islam, which I don't know a ton about except for the fact that it's queer. It's about a main character who traveled from Bangladesh to Brooklyn to live with her uncle and her aunt, and it's also about queerness and coming into your own queer identity. So it had a rainbow on the cover. I wasn't going to leave it there. I've also got The Couple Next Door by Shari Lapena, which... I don't know a ton about, except that it's a thriller that I wanted to read a while ago. It's possible. I got a lot of thrillers. It's possible a bunch of them are terrible, but I'm pushing myself to read more adult fiction. And part of that is trying to read more thrillers. We'll have to see how this goes. I don't know anything about this. Ooh, this one's fun. I got uh, Blood Red Road by Moira Young, which is the first book in the Dustlands trilogy. I've actually already read this. People might not know this, but I read Blood Red Road when I was in high school and I loved it, but I never finished the series. So I don't know if I'm gonna finish the series. It just felt like I really liked this book, so it was time that I own it. I bought it. This starts, uh, it's about twins. It is about a girl who sets off to rescue her brother after he's been captured, but it's like super brutal. And it's one of those books like The Knife of Never Letting Go where it's written phonetically. So it's, um, that's one bastard of a cloud, I says. We better get out of here, says Lou. And like, there aren't, there isn't like punctuation or like quotation marks. Um, it's just like a really cool, it's a cool book. So I wanted my own copy of it. Already talked about this in my October TBR, but I grabbed Sock Hill Girls by Claire Legrand. I know this is an arc. I know I shouldn't have gotten it. I have this and I have one more arc. Actually, two more arcs. Oh God. It's just like they were there. So I got them. I'm going to read them and review them. I, I know that we shouldn't buy arcs. It's really bad. Don't do that. Do not buy arcs. But they were at this half price book sale. So I picked them up. Uh, Sock Hill Girls is a book about an island where like there's a monster that's killing girls and this is about three girls who set out to hunt down the monster but i also know this is really queer so i'm reading it in october this is my october patron chosen book this is the book that my patrons were like read sock hill girls and we're reading this as part of a group through caravan so if you want to join us on caravan the link will be in the description we're talking about this in October. I also grabbed Molokai by Alan Brennert. This looked familiar. I'm pretty sure Sam from Thoughts on Tomes, like, used to hype up this book a ton. Maybe she still does, but it just looked familiar, and that's kind of the reason I grabbed it. Also, when I looked it up on Goodreads, it had a ton of really positive reviews. That's all I know. I got Molokai. Um, it's set in Hawaii which I was interested in. So yeah. Is this the other arc? I think this, yeah, this is the other arc. Okay, so I have The Bridegroom by Ha Jin, which is a selection of stories. To be fair though about this arc, this book was literally released in the year 2000. So this is a very old advanced copy. Um, but this is 12 stories uh, that bring vividly to life the daily dramas of Chinese men and women who are starting to feel the influence of the West. So I thought that sounded interesting. And like I said, it's been one of my goals to read more short story collections. So 
yeah. I've also got one that's very out of left field for me. That is Twin Cities by Carol Musk Dukes. This is a poetry book. This is a, this is a very, very teeny tiny book. I haven't read that much poetry, but I've been trying to read more poetry this year, and it's been a good experience. So I figured why not? It's not gonna take me that long to read, so I might as well grab it. We'll see how it goes. Okay, I have the final arc here. Um, it is Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. This was released at the beginning of this year. I do eventually want to buy a full copy of this book if I really love it. Here's the thing, Diane Setterfield wrote um, one of my favorite books of all time, The Thirteenth Tale, and she also wrote a book that I read last year, uh, or not last year, I read it a while ago, and I hated it. Just hated it. Bellman in Black. She wrote Bellman in Black and I couldn't stand it. So this one is gonna determine if The Thirteenth Tale was a fluke or if I just really didn't like Bellman in Black and I really do love Diane Setterfield. I do know that Diane Setterfield writes books that tend to feel very gothic and there is usually a mystery at the center of them to do with generational influence, historical influence. This one looks like it's gonna be fantasy which ought to be interesting. Next I have The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon, which I only know through hype from other people. A lot of people loved this for a while on booktube, like this was getting all the attention, and now everyone's all about Prior of the Orange Tree, which I'm planning to read. It's also by Samantha Shannon, but I thought maybe I could get invested in some of Samantha Shannon's other work as well, since this comes so highly recommended. I literally know nothing about this book, but look at what it has under the cover. It is gorgeous. We also have a book called Speak. This is by Louisa Hall. Um, I grabbed this because I thought it had an interesting cover. Then I notice it has a blurb from Emily St. John Mandel on the cover, author of Station Eleven, one of my favorite books. Then it looked like on the back, a lot of people were like, this is unique. I've never read another book like this another draw. And it looks like it's about the creation of artificial intelligence and about personhood and identity and all of that sounded like exactly my shit. Like everything converged to make me be like, I have to read this book. So I grabbed it, threw it in my tote bag. I, it's very plain under the cover. I always like to check and see if there's anything amazing under the cover. Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't, but we'll have to see how I feel about Speak. I also have a book Green Island by Shauna Yang Ryan, which I grabbed for the cover. And then I was reading more and it is set in Taiwan. And it is a sweeping novel across six decades and two continents. Um, so I've never read a book set in Taiwan before. And if there's any description that fits me as a person, it's sweeping historical fiction set over decades of time. That is the kind of historical fiction I like. Plus this starts in 1947, which means it uh, is set during the 20th century, which is my preferred historical fiction. I'm really hoping I love this. I also have four book of the month books. Uh, the first of which is All Grown Up. This is by Jamie Attenberg. This is about a 39 year old single child free woman who defies convention as she seeks connection. Um, which didn't entirely draw my interest, but when I looked at this book on Goodreads, a lot of people were saying, like, it's a really short book, but it packs a really intense emotional punch. Like, this was getting really good reviews. I've never read anything by this author before, but I thought it sounded interesting, and I have been, like, drawn more and more to Book of the Month books. I just think they look really beautiful, so I've been kind of slowly collecting them ever since I moved here. We'll have to see if I like this. I also have three books that are thrillers that I know nothing about, two of which I don't know that I'm going to love, but they're book of the month books. So I got these three book of the month books. We have Dead Letters. This is by Kate Dolan Leach. It's a thriller. And we have two books by Sarah Pinborough, uh, Behind Her Eyes and Cross Her Heart. Cross Her Heart, I've since read a lot of people like absolutely hate but that it's a wild ride and behind her eyes i've heard similar things if slightly better than this one so at some point i'm just gonna have to binge through both of these and find out exactly how bad they are it'll be a journey but one that i'm excited to take this is 
<laughs> Dead Letters is yet another book. I feel like I have read or heard described so many books recently that are about a sister and her other sister is dead, but then she starts receiving letters from her. Like, why is that such a common theme? I don't know, but that's what this is about. Who knows? Okay, I'm down to the last stack. This is a stack of books that I got at the Goodwill, because I went to the Goodwill to find sweaters. I found two sweaters and a very large stack of books. So I have Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. I know nothing about this, but I refuse to watch the series until I read the book because it's such like a celebrated book. So many people read it. I believe this is a domestic thriller. Honestly, I don't know how well this is gonna go because recently discovered I can't stand books that are set in the suburbs or like are about suburban type families. They usually really annoy me, but I'm gonna get started on this one, see if I like it. If I don't, I can jump into the series, which a lot of people really love and I'm way more willing to put up with that kind of story in a like show world rather than a book world for some reason. Maybe I'll read this soon. I have two books now by Leanne Moriarty. Really hope I like her books. We've also got a book called The Nest. This is by Cynthia Dupree Sweeney. Um, I just remembered seeing this book a couple years ago. This is like a literary fiction book about a family that comes back together for some reason. There's some kind of mystery to it. I was just obsessed with this cover for a long time, so I kind of wanted to know what the book was going to be. So I grabbed a copy. Ha, huh, this one's kind of a random one. I grabbed Aragon by Christopher Paolini because this is the final book that I needed to start to make my Inheritance Cycle books match. I have been searching and searching because there are four books in the Inheritance Cycle and like all four of my books were different sizes. Now at long last, the first three are in this edition of paperback. They're all the same size and then I have a hardcover edition of the final book and I'm fine with that. I'm just glad to have this because I used to have this mass market paperback edition and it drove me crazy. Like, it's very uptight of me, it's very shallow of me, but I couldn't stand these little mass market paperbacks. So now I have a full copy. This, if you don't know what the inheritance cycle is about, it's about a boy who discovers a dragon egg and becomes a dragon rider. It was real big back in the early 2000s, which is when I read it, so I have like an emotional connection to this series. I don't know that it necessarily holds up, but it has that nostalgia for me, so finally my series matches. I also have Commencement. This is by J. Courtney Sullivan. It is literary fiction about friends who graduate from college together and I believe it's about their college years and also picking up a little while later. This was on my TBR for a while on Goodreads because I was looking for more books set in college and that's all I know about it. We also have A Tale for the Time Being. This is by Ruth Azeki. This was really hyped. I think the year it came out, I saw this cover a lot, so I was interested in picking up a copy so that I could read it. This is about a, basically, uh, on a remote island in the Pacific Northwest, this Hello Kitty lunchbox kind of washes up on shore and an author finds it, which he opens up the lunchbox. Inside is the diary of a young Japanese girl, and the author thinks that the lunchbox got to her because of the 2011 Japanese Tsunami. That's what I know. It was a 2013 Man Booker Prize finalist. Um, I think it sounds gorgeous. I think it has a gorgeous cover. I'm obsessed with this cover. Oh my god, do I really only have five books left? Oh my god. The next one that I have is The Leavers by Lisa Ko. Again, a book of the month book. I picked this up because it seems like a mystery, but also a generational story. It's about a guy, his mother was an undocumented Chinese immigrant and at one point she just went missing and eventually he's adopted by a pair of well-meaning white uh, professors, I think, or am I mixing that up? Yeah, professors. Haha. <laughs> um, so it is about this guy uh, growing up without his mother, but you're also hearing stories about his mother. You're also reading from his mother's perspective and that sounded really interesting to me. I've been trying to diversify my 
like adult fiction because I think my YA fiction shelves are super diverse. I have a huge range of stories. Adult fiction, I have mostly books by white women. So one of my goals when I was picking up all these books was to find a lot of stories that were not by white women. And I think that I did pretty well with all of the different books that I grabbed. We'll have to find out over time. This one's super random. I grabbed Vile Bodies by Evelyn Waugh. 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 I've been standing here for so long. Um, this is a book I read when I was studying abroad, living in London. It is a weird satire book about the 1930s and I really loved it. I think it's very funny and off the wall and I've wanted a copy for ages. This is a Bark Bay Books edition and I just think it's really pretty. Like, it's a very cool size. It's like a very sturdy book. So I wanted my own copy of this because I read it ages ago. I've been wanting to like look back at some of the books that I read while I was in London because there were a bunch that I enjoyed. So maybe I can revisit this soon. I just think it's a gorgeous, gorgeous edition of this. I also have A Man Called Uwe. Uwe? I can never remember how it's pronounced. This is by Frederick Bachman. Um, Frederick Bachman is just an author that a lot of people were recommending for a while. So I've been collecting some of his books. I also have my grandmother asked me to tell you she's sorry, so maybe I can have a Frederick Bachman month where I read my Frederick Bachman books. I don't know a ton about this. I think it's about like a grumpy old man. That's what I know. And that it comes highly recommended. So I, I bought it. I've said these words so many times in the past hour. <sighs> okay, last two books. These two I'm actually really excited about. They're both by the same author, Toni Morrison. So I got Beloved by Toni Morrison as well as Tar Baby. Toni Morrison is an absolutely celebrated Black author. I have really wanted to read her work. I've read, I think, like bits and pieces. I would read bits of her work when I was trying to get my minor in women's and gender studies and in general when I was trying to get my English degree. So I picked these up because I've wanted to read Toni Morrison books. It is absolutely, it's absolutely absurd that I emerged from a liberal arts college where I got a major in English and a minor in women's and gender studies and I haven't read a Toni Morrison book. Like, it's absurd. So this one, Tar Baby, was published originally in 1981. Beloved was in 1987. I'm really excited to read them in 2020, get some more background in like classic works by women of color in particular. I'm very glad that I found both of these. I don't know a ton about what they're both about, but I'll tell you a lot more about them when I actually read them. Okay, we did it folks, we made it to the end. Those are all of the books that I acquired in the month of September. I went overboard, but it's fine. Um, I recognize that this may have been a slightly rushed haul sorry about that. I'm sorry that I didn't know what most of these books were about. Hopefully I like them. Um, sometimes I pick up books for very random reasons and sometimes I just don't know what books are about. And sometimes when I pick up books and I don't know what they're about, they wind up being books I absolutely love. Like that's been a tradition of mine for a long time to go into independent bookstores, just dig through until I find a book that I think looks good and I read it and I discover a totally new story I might not have discovered otherwise. So I just took a lot of those chances in September. Um, be sure to let me know if you've read any of these books, what you thought about them, which ones should I prioritize, what should I read first, what should I maybe push till a little bit later, and let me know some of the books you acquired in the month of September. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!